Maddie Zabel here. Today I'm going to show you how to patina your metal. It's a way to add some real nice interest and color and variation to your finished piece. At this point in the metals process, you should have sawn out your metal, filed it, and sanded it to 600. It is super important with all the patinas that I'm showing you today that your metal has been freshly sanded. That metal has to have the surface of the metal fresh and clean so when it's reacting to the chemicals that we're introducing it to, um, you get really good strong reactions. The other thing you need to note is your fingers have oils on them, so make sure as you're sanding it you've washed your hands um, because if you otherwise you'll get little fingerprints on it that'll show up as you take your stuff out of the patinas. So nice fresh clean metal across the board, sanded to 600. We're going to do three patinas today. Um, and a patina, just so you know, chemically speaking, is when the surface of the metal has been bombarded or exposed to different ions like oxygen. And in our case, we're going to expose it to vinegar, which is an acid, ammonia, which is some nasty stuff, and um, some sulfur compounds from an egg. So we bombard the surface of the metal and it causes a chemical reaction on that surface that changes the color of the metal. It's an, kind of an oxidation reaction. So rust is technically a patina, but it's fairly undesirable. Tarnish on silver is technically a patina, but again, kind of an undesirable one. We're going to make some beautiful patinas today with some really simple things you can find around your house. The first two patinas I'm going to show you, um, I don't really have any safety concerns with. You're going to use a boiled egg in one, and the other you're either going to use sawdust and vinegar, or potato chips and vinegar, or like I did today, pretzel rods and vinegar. So those things aren't things you need to be too concerned about. Um, the last patina that I'm going to show you, the third one, does have some safety concerns, and I want to address them here and now, and I will revisit some of them when we get to that point. We are going to use ammonia. Ammonia is a pretty caustic and yucky chemical. Um, you can find it in the cleaning section of most grocery stores. Um, what you need to be careful of is the fumes with the ammonia and avoiding getting things in your eyes. So safety wise, I want you to wear goggles. I want you to wear gloves if you have them, like a latex glove or like dishwashing gloves. Um, and it's really important that you do this in a super well ventilated area. So if you're my student, I'm asking you to do this outside if you choose to do this patina. Um, that way, you know, the wind just pulls those fumes away. Um, if you can't do this outside, make sure you're in a space where you have a vent fan or open windows or things like that. It really, really is important. The last thing you need to know about ammonia is you cannot mix it with other chemicals, um, especially bleach. It's super, super dangerous and even deadly to mix ammonia with other chemicals. So if you're going to do this and you're one of my students, I want you to make sure that your parents are aware of what you're doing and potentially even watch this video um, so that they can make sure that you're set up in a safe space and they're okay with all of this. Um, be safe, my friends, wear those goggles, wear gloves, well-ventilated area, and do not mix ammonia ever with another chemical, especially bleach. I am super excited to try out this technique. We are going to use a hard boiled egg to darken our copper. In the classroom, we use what's called liver of sulfur to do this, and this is an example of a piece of copper that's been treated with liver of sulfur. It's a really nice patina to use when you've texturized your metal. You can see that the feathers, this is an etched piece, the feathers that have been etched after I applied the liver of sulfur, I used a little light sandpaper and sanded the surface and that brought out the copper color and left the darkness behind. So I have two pieces of copper that I have texturized with a stamp and they're both clean, fresh and clean and ready to patina. So in the classroom we use liver of sulfur but I'm at home, a lot of my students are at home right now so we're gonna do this in a slightly different way than typical. We are going to use this hard boiled egg. First thing we need to do is smash the eggs. So we're going to put it in a plastic bag. I have a hammer. I'm pretty excited to do this step. <laughs> the more we break it up, the more of the sulfur, which is in the egg, which is what reacts with the copper to turn it dark, is released. Also, this is going to smell. Okay, so when I'm done, I'm putting this outside. So I've got my egg all mashed up in my bag. I'm going to shake it down to one side. 
it's the gas that turns the copper brown. So I don't want to put this right on the egg for a variety of reasons, one of which that's not how it works. So I've got this container. I'm going to put my copper in it face up. Um, and I'm also going to put some brass in here so we can see how it reacts to the brass. Brass, brass is not as reactive as copper, so I'm not expecting a huge change in that brass. And then we are going to put it in the bag with the eggs. I'm going to seal it up. I want to make sure that there's some space for the the sulfur gas from the eggs to kind of permeate my copper and start changing the color. Now, if you use liver of sulfur, if you've got that available to you, this reaction happens really quickly within minutes and then you rinse it to stop the reaction. This is going to take longer because it's not as strong of a chemical. So I'm gonna put this outside and just keep an eye on it for about the next 24 hours. When it's as dark as I want it to get, I'll take it out, rinse it out, and I'll take you through those steps. So that is the egg patina at home. It's gonna darken my metal. The next patina I'm gonna show you how to use is a vinegar patina. The vinegar is gonna push your metal more towards a green color. At school, we have a old coffee can, a plastic one, that has a bunch of sawdust soaked in vinegar. And we do a sawdust and vinegar patina. I don't have sawdust at home, and I'm showing this to you guys so you can do this kind of stuff at home too. So I wanted to use materials available to me that might be available to you. Another way to do a vinegar patina is do a vinegar and potato chip patina. I don't have any potato chips, so I'm going to experiment with pretzel rods today because we did have pretzel rods, so we'll see how this works. The first thing you're gonna have to do, whether you're using potato chips or pretzel rods, is mush them up. And then you're gonna pour in some vinegar and let them soak until they're soft. And that's where I am right now. And you want it to be a little juicy. <laughs> so if I push, you can see the liquid starting to come out of the pretzel rods a little bit. Um, and I'm just gonna mush it up a little bit more. Kind of gross, but super easy. It's not gonna hurt you. There's no real safety concerns with the vinegar. Probably don't wanna get it in your eye because it'll stain, but it's a pretty innocuous substance. Okay, I'll wash my hands, of course, when I'm done with this. If you have sawdust at home, you can use that too. You just put the sawdust in a container, add vinegar to it. You want it to be, again, a little juicy. Um, once you've got your potato chip and vinegar, pretzel rod and vinegar, or sawdust and vinegar prepped and ready, the next step is easy. You gotta have your clean metal like I've mentioned. So these are all freshly sanded to 600. And what we're gonna do is get our fingers a little bit dirty with the sawdust or the pretzel rod or the potato chip. And I'm just gonna kinda dab onto that surface. Anywhere that I have material, it's gonna cause kind of a speck on my piece. So I've got that dabbed onto the surface. And then I'm just gonna set it on the surface of the pretzel rod um, mixture or potato mixture or the sawdust mixture. I like the sawdust mixture because it's a little bit cleaner. Um, I can get smaller pieces better and I'm not quite sure how this is all going to work out here as far as the material on the surface. What you don't want to have on the surface of your metal is a lot of liquid because that'll halt the reaction. You want kind of the material and then the spaces in between. All right, I have all my metal dabbed up with a little bit of this yummy, yummy mixture and I'm ready to put it in the bag. It's really important that you don't bury your metal. If you bury your metal, the reaction's gonna kinda like self-clean. Um, so make sure that your metal is face up and it's on the surface of your bowl. Then I'm gonna seal it in this plastic bag. If you have a plastic container that you wanna use this, you wanna use that you can seal as opposed to a plastic bag, that's fine too. What's important is we trap the fumes from the vinegar in with our metal. This has to sit for a while. It takes a while for the vinegar reaction to occur. Um, I usually tell my students 24 to 48 hours. We'll see what happens with my pretzel rod and vinegar mixture. This is an example of what the sawdust and vinegar mixture looks like on copper. You can see that it leaves little green specks. It makes the background of the copper get a little bit darker. Um, and it's overall kind of a really interesting, highly varied reaction. For our last patina, we're going to do an ammonia patina. 
Out of all the patinas I've shown you, this is the one where I really have safety concerns for you. If you're going to do the ammonia patina, you have to wear goggles. You should wear gloves. That's why you see me with my uh, latex gloves on. You could use cleaning gloves, wash, you know, dishwashing gloves, but you should wear gloves. And you need to do it in a well-ventilated space. My plan was to do this outside, but it's too windy for me to take a video outside today. So I'm doing it in my studio with open windows. And as soon as I'm done getting everything put together, I'm going to take this outside and it's going to sit outside to do the magical work of patina. So doing this at home, please do it outside unless it's a frigid day. If you have to do it inside, you need to make sure it's in a well-ventilated area. We are going to be using ammonia, um, and ammonia is some pretty strong stuff. You don't really wanna breathe too much of it in. So we're gonna be careful with how much ammonia we use, when we use it, and how long we keep things open. You need to have water. You need to have a sealable plastic container clean metals, freshly sanded to 600, and you need to have salt. I have both some um, unidized salt, um, and then I also have some regular table salt. I'm gonna see how they work for, um, differently from each other. This patina is gonna give us some effect like you see here on this back piece of copper. It's really beautiful, deep blue um, patina, really, really lovely color that plays really nicely with copper. So that's kind of what we're shooting for in this patina. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my metal. I'm just gonna get it damp. Um, I like to do this with the spray bottle. I don't have a spray bottle at home. Um, so at school, when I have my students do this and we have our station set up, um, I have them spritz the top of the copper with a little bit of water. And I'm also gonna do brass here. I know from experience that brass doesn't do too much in the ammonia patina, um, but I want you to kind of see what that looks like. Once we've got the, the copper wet, we're going to sprinkle a little salt on it. I'm gonna use regular table salt on the top one. I'm gonna use my um, rock salt on the lower guy here. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of each on the brass, just to see what happens. It is important with the ammonia patina that you have whatever side you want to be the um, front of your piece facing up. The next thing I'm gonna do, I've got this prepped and ready to go. I need to prep the bin where the ammonia is going. I've got paper towels folded up in the bottom and it's gonna act as a little sponge. I'm gonna pour just enough ammonia in there to get these damp. I don't want liquid sitting in my bin. So just a little bit of ammonia in here. When I open up my bottle, I want to have the ammonia bottle open for a short amount of time as possible, and I want to have this open for a short amount of time as possible. So I've got my lid near. I'm going to open up the bottle very carefully and quickly, dump just a little bit into this bin. Then I'm going to seal this up as I explain the next step. Because like I said, you want this open a short amount of time as possible. Ammonia stinks and it does not feel good to breathe in and it's not healthy to breathe it in. So please, please do this in a super well ventilated area. Outside is ideal if possible. For my next step, I need to pick up each of these pieces and put them into my bin. Um, I want to do that quickly. I want to make sure not to dump my salt and water off the surface. Um, and then I'm going to seal the bin back up. When I'm moving my pieces, I wanna make sure when I'm placing them that I'm placing them next to each other. If you've got more than one piece in there, you don't want them to overlap. So I wanna make sure one piece at a time, no overlap, then I'm gonna seal it right away. Sealed up. At this point, this guy's ready to go outside. And just as a little layer of protection, I'm gonna also put it into a plastic bag. I'm gonna be careful when I put it in that plastic bag that I don't tip the bin because I don't want those pieces to slide over each other. The ammonia patina will start to work. You'll see some color in, like within an hour, um, but to really have it settle in, you want it to go for about 24 to 48 hours. If you go over 48, um, the patina and the, the, uh, the ammonia starts to eat into the copper a little bit and you'll actually get like your patina flaking off the surface. 
So this is a patina you don't wanna let sit for too long. Um, so 24 to 48 hours. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna sit it outside next to my egg patina, which is a sulfur reaction or um, sulfur compound reaction and my vinegar patina. And these guys will sit outside and I'll keep an eye on them over the next 24 hours. And when I feel like they're in a good spot to stop, I'll show you the next step. This is the pretzel and vinegar. It's been about six hours since I put it in and I really, really love the color that it's produced. I liked it a lot maybe three hours ago, but what I know about these patinas is they tend to lose a little color when you do rinsing and, and kind of finalizing things. So what I'm going to do right now is take this out. And there's two routes that you can go about the next step. Um, I'm seeing a lot of places online saying let it dry completely. And then in my experience, I usually have students rinse things right away. So what I'm going to do is my own little experiment here is I'm going to take one of the brass and rinse it right away. And I'm going to leave the other brass and the copper out to dry and then I'll rinse it um, once it's dry tomorrow and kind of see what the difference in the outcome is. The pretzel sticks and vinegar I'm going to throw away and then wash the dish. Here is my copper with the potato chip and vinegar patina. It is ready to get rinsed out so I'm in my bathroom and I've got this here ready. I'm going to take it out. I'll take out the feather, turn on the cold water, and rinse it off, which is the same way I'll rinse all of my patina. When you're rinsing it, you just want to rub really gently. If I rub hard, I'm going to rub the patina off. But you want to make sure that you're getting any of the solid, either potato chip or vinegar, off of the feather. And it's that simple. Here are the final results of the patina. I have one step left with these before I assemble, and that is to seal them, and I'll show you that in another video coming up soon. Um, I have my vinegar patinas, my ammonia, and these are what came out of the egg patina experiment. With the ammonia patina, um, the salt really didn't make too much of a difference, whether it was table salt or the rock salt, similar results. You can see on the ammonia patina where the metal shows through, that's where I had more water, like a pool of water sitting on that surface. Um, and that's where you're seeing the metal through. Um, but you really do need that salt water solution um, on the surface in part to help that reaction take place. You can see how the big guy turned out. The little one that had the rock salt turned out pretty nice. When you go to wash these off, I want you to follow the following steps. One, while the piece is still outside, open up your container, open up the bag completely, and let it air out outside for a while, like a half hour or so. That'll let the fumes to dissipate. Then you're gonna take the metal with your gloves on and goggles on. You'll take the metal out, take it inside. I want you to rinse it off in the sink, and when you rinse it, just very gently, just like I did with the vinegar patina, very, very gently rub that surface to get any salt or water off the surface front and back. Um, then leave these out to air dry and dump the ammonia, um, the little paper towels that had the ammonia soaked in it, dump those into the trash outside right away. Okay, so be safe, wear those goggles, um, gloves, and don't bring that whole container back inside. Do all that work outside. Um, surprisingly, the brass took the ammonia patina really well this time. In the past, I haven't had luck with it. But you know what? Sometimes with patinas, you're surprised. It's really kind of experimental. You never quite know what you're going to get. You can control it to some level, but not completely, which is kind of fun. The vinegar patinas really surprised me, and I'm sort of in love with, <laughs> with the pretzel rod vinegar patina. Um, I love all the variations that you can see in both the brass and the copper. And it's got this really light kind of celadon green that showed up in both the brass and the copper, which I think is really, really beautiful. And here you can see it on the copper. A lot of um, modeling of the browns in the background of the copper is just really kind of lovely. Um, and I'm excited to seal it and get a little shine on that too. I think it'll even bring the color out more. Um, if you remember, I wanted to experiment with leaving one set out to dry and then rinsing and one set rinse right away. This piece I rinsed right away. And then these two I let dry and then rinse. I would recommend rinsing right away. I know you can't see too much of a difference in these, um, but when I waited for it to dry and I went to rinse it, 
getting that vinegary pretzel goo that had dried on off wasn't easy. Um, and so I had to really rub quite hard on that surface and scrub a little with my fingernail. And in that process, I'm sure there's color, especially on the copper, that would have stayed if I had rinsed it right away that got rubbed off. So I would rinse things right away. Um, and that's what I've always done, but I was seeing online that people were doing it where they let it dry. And um, you know what? I think I was right the first time. <laughs> Rinse it right away. The vinegar and potato chip patina, um, and I did go and buy potato chips because I wanted to see how this works. So this is vinegar and potato chip. This one works like the vinegar and sawdust. This is looks exactly like a vinegar and sawdust patina would look like. It's a little speckled. You see a nice sheen of green, little dark speckles of of a brighter green here and there. And you can see it looks very different than the pretzel rod and vinegar patina. Um, so if you wanna look like this, the potato or the sawdust would be the route for you to go. The egg patina also worked really unexpectedly and I have two versions here. This is what it looked like coming out of the eggs. And a little hint here, um, I went outside, I took my bin that had the, the little white square dish that had my copper in it and the brass and I pulled it out, I zipped up the egg bag and I threw the egg bag in the trash outside. Then I brought my bin in, rinsed everything off and set it out to dry. And the pieces didn't get as dark as I anticipated and I could leave them in longer and I'm sure they would get darker the longer I left it in. Um, but it really has this kind of red tone that came out in it and some yellows. It almost acts like if you've ever seen a flame patina and eventually I'll make a video on that as well. Um, a flame patina and really pulling up some colorful um, colors <laughs> here and there. So really unexpected and I kind of I kind of love that one too. Um, on this side what I did is I sanded the surface really lightly with my 600 so the patina stays down low and it kind of highlights that texture a little bit more. I didn't sand all the way flush down because I didn't want to remove all of that color. I just wanted to bring out those little circles a little bit more. So you can kind of see these two next to each other and how this one, the texture is a little bit more apparent. Um, so I've got to sand this one yet. The egg patina on the brass didn't really do much and there could be a variety of reasons for that. I had polished these prior to putting it into patina and I probably did not get all the polishing compound off the surface, which means they're that the surface was protected by a thin layer of the wax from polishing. Um, so I'll have to try that again sometime and see what happens. This is what we were trying to mimic with the egg patina. This is a sulfur, um, liver of sulfur patina. And you can see the background gets really, really dark. We clearly didn't get that dark with this, but we did pull up some nice color and get that copper aging. In closing, I just want to say that patinas are the bomb.com, as we would have said when I was in high school in the 90s. Um, they're really, really fun to play with. You can experiment and get lots of different results as long as you're doing so safely. Um, if you want to get more into patinas, there's a lot of recipes and information online. There's some great books on it, but if you're going to get more into it, you really need to study the chemistry and the safety of it. Um, if you are not yourself a chemist, you need to make a chemistry friend or meet someone who's a chemistry teacher and ask them for safety and advice if you're going to try something beyond what we did today um, or things in which you're mixing different chemicals because even household chemicals can be really dangerous if you mix them in the incorrect ways. So have fun, be safe, enjoy making colorful, beautiful, interesting pieces of metal.